Okay. Oh, uh, just one minute. I'm just going to share it now. Okay, just one minute. So. Oops. This one is, let's have a look if you can. Last learning outcome three, two. Um, let's just get one up. Okay, so that's the one. So, um, good morning. My name's Shazia Khan. Um, and today's unit is um, the academic and research skills for business. And um, we've covered all six learning outcomes. Today's session is the assignment discussion, but I'm going to summarise um, each outcome for you so you have a little bit of an idea of what you're doing for the assignment. So the first learning outcome which we looked at was to be able to assess your own academic competencies. And we looked at things like, you know, uh, what academic competencies are. We looked at things like, you know, your personal skills. So we looked a little bit at what soft skills and hard skills are. We identified um, the different types of skills that are needed within a business. We also looked at a really important thing to identify your strengths, weaknesses, your opportunities and threats. And that was looking at the SWOT analysis. These, all these templates and things are on Moodle for you to have a look at in your own time. Um, we also looked at um, a template of the uh, SWOT analysis. So you can see that, Jasmine, can't you? Yeah? Yeah, yeah, okay. Yes. So this uh, identifies what your strengths are, what your weaknesses are, and opportunities and threats. And sometimes, you know, it's, it's a struggle. Sometimes people find it quite hard to identify any weaknesses. Uh, but it is really good practice to identify some sort of weakness. Maybe the fact that, you know, if you're doing work, you can't say no, you want to do more all the time. That could be a weakness as well. Um, so, you know, you, you need to be setting targets as well for yourself. And we looked at the SMART targets, and this is an acronym, which means um, looking at uh, specific, measurable, achievable, realistic, and the time bound. So we, we went through each one so you were able to understand that. So a lot of this, you, I'm, I'm, I'm going through quite quickly because we've got to go to the assignment session because we've only yep. got the hour. But uh, try and read a lot of it in your own time as well. So we looked at the smart smart objectives, what they mean and what they are used for in regards to um, uh, any sort of situation where, you know, you want to do something and you want to identify what your targets are and um, how long you're going to take to do this and um, how will it be accomplished, you know, what your goal is and what, you know, who, where, when, why, why these goals, why do you think it's so important to have these SWOT analysis and these smart goals in process. Why do you think businesses, it's good for a business to have that? You can see like what your goal is and where you yeah. are. At. Yeah. And also, you know, the milestone of getting to that goal, yeah. you know, the, the completion day and things like that. And it really helps you as an individual as well. Then we looked at uh, your PDP plan. And we looked at an example of a PDP plan. So what your achievements are, what activities you need to take to, to achieve your goal, what your target date is and what your actual date is. Because, you know, there's two dates in regards to what you in, intend to do and when you intend to do it. So this examples here was that I intend to do my HND or HNC in, you know, um, um, diploma management or anything like that. And then what, how you intend to do it, the actual time and the time it's going to get to doing it. OK, so this was learning outcome one. Can you see this now? It says learning outcome two. Yep. Yep. OK, so this was... Um, Again, how uh, to know how to research information using primary and secondary um, methods. We looked at the importance of research, why research is so important, what research is, because everyone has a different definition. Academics, Aristotle, Bacon, they have their different definitions of what research is. We looked at the key features of educational research. We also went in to identify research design. Uh, and what what what's the difference between a research design and a research project um, and the purpose of it as well. 
We then went on to look at the philosophy in regards to educational research, what academics thought, okay? What is um, ontological position, uh, positiveness, quantitative and qualitative research and the difference between both and why it's used in businesses. We again went on to look at the difference between both again, and um, we looked at um, the MM research as well, qualitative and quantitative research and what methods they use, research questions, you know, why are they important that we, you know, prepare with research questions rather than, you know, um, uh, you know, just put some questions together. You've got to prepare and it's important we prepare. Clarity, uh, empirical focus, who we focus on, significance, what's the rationale between these questions? Does the question matter? What of interest is it and whom are we aiming this to? Possible aims and objectives. Um, and we looked at the aims and claims here, kind of research questions and examples of research. Some influences of social, um, social research values and practical considerations, roles and values of researcher. So this was mainly about research, this, the bodies of knowledge, so theories, how they link together and different critical approaches that we use, issues in qualitative research and issues in quantitative research as well. We looked at both uh, strategies for validity and then some issues in quantitative research because there are pros and cons of both. We also looked at uh, the conceptual model for MM uh, where it's a quantitative mixed method and qualitative research. So uh, we looked at the purposes and um, then we looked at the MM designs. Uh, we looked at the purpose and this just give you a meta infer inference and how it, how a concurrent mixed model works. Then we looked at a um, sequential mixed model, how that works. And then we finally looked at the fully integrated mixed model. Um, and just identified, you know, how to read research articles, how to crit critically appreciate our strengths and weaknesses and why it's important that we need to research. Research is so important for any organization, for any business. Then we looked at learning outcome three, yep. which was, can you see that, Jasmine? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Which was to able to be able to take effective notes from a variety of sources. So different type of note taking, um, the different types of sources. So what is note taking? And and we identify the different types and the difference between note taking and note making. So there's a big difference between that, and we identified that in the sense of a business environment. So we identified the elements of that. We also looked at just, um, uh, three note-taking skills, okay, like effective note-taking techniques, um, outlining, mind mapping, and the kernel system. And we went through each one and what the importance of each one is in regard to um, a business and why it's so effective. We then went on to look at the what the R's are of note-taking, the five R's which was record, reduce, recite, reflect, and review. And we went through each one. We looked at the different varieties of uh, sources used in active listening and reading strategies and why they're so important. So active listening, and on there is a video that you could look at in your own time. Some examples of active listening techniques um, and emotional intelligence. Uh, we looked at the three years of active listening um, and then we went on to the different strategies of reading. So we had skimming, scanning, intensive, and extensive, and why these are used and why what kind of people kind of use these or, you know, where are, when you're skimming something, what does it mean and things like that. So we went through each one and identified some examples as well. Then we looked at paraphrasing and summarizing information and the importance of paraphrasing someone else's work, you know, and then identifying it with your referencing skills. Um, we also looked at a couple of articles in regards to um, the, the views of the authors, because, you know, sometimes certain articles have different views of different sources. Then 
this tools we use for this was things like skills you need or mind tools that you could go on in your own time. And also um, there's lots of additional reading that you could do on Moodle and all the resources are there for you. Then um, we looked at, um, can you see that? It says four, yep. five, eight, six. So we looked at academic research skills and we looked at the first one was learning outcome four and being able to uh, plan and draft a piece of research. And what we looked at in that was uh, to create a research um, on a chosen topic area. And then we looked at drafting a piece of research um, and using your own um, feedback from your tutor to draft it. So we looked at the first one, being able to plan um, and draft a piece of research and we looked at uh, creating a plan. So you need to identify the topic area. You need to be in touch with your supervisor. These were some websites for health and social care that you could go on. Um, you could look at things like the impact of COVID-19 on businesses, some examples. Uh, so you could look at identifying firstly a research area. Then you create a plan. So this is quite important where you identify the aims and objectives of the research. You identify the sampling techniques and size of the research. So how many research participants am I going to have? Where am I going to collect the data from? Then you need to identify the method for data collection. So what I intend to do, surveys, interviews, and then prepare questionnaire. And the section should be about 200, 300 words. Draft. So this is uh, the structure that, you know, how it's divided into sections and how we expect you to do it. So the first one is number one is an introduction. So introduction to your study, what you aim to do, Jasmine. So if there's a research paper on, again, like COVID and the issues of um, biz on businesses and the impact, then you will look at that as your brief introduction to the study. What your aims and objectives are. And then your research significance and rationale. What is the rationale for you doing this? Then you've got number two, which is the literature review. Critical review of your academic literature, preparing a conceptual framework. And then number three, so here, sample conceptual framework, stress, variable sleep disorder, troubled adolescent, and then depression. So it kind of all is independent variables that you need to take into account. Number three, choice of research methodology. So are you going to use qualitative data or quantitative data? Are you going to use a case study or a survey? Data collection, so primary and secondary, sampling and sampling size. Then number four, data collection and analysis. So here you'll be looking at the presentation of data, the analysis of the data, interpretation of findings, and the compar comparison with academic literature. Then number five, the summary and conclusion. So this is literally summarizing your research paper and uh, summarizing your findings. Any sort of recommendations that you may base on your findings and the limitations in the current research and scope of future work. So what you did, did it identify what you wanted to do? And then number six, references, appendixes. And uh, you know the system that is used in regards to referencing, don't you? Yeah, um, the Harvard system. Yeah. And that's the one you'd use throughout all your work. Mm -hmm. Then we looked at learning outcome five. And I'm sorry, I'm going through this quite fast, but um, I should be really doing the assignment session, but I'll go through it anyway. So you've got a little bit of an idea what you're doing. OK, so being able to produce academic work. So here you were looking at using to draft and enhance a professional report. So you need to get your draft reviewed by the tutor or the supervisor. And then you need to emphasize should be findings on the research and recommendations um, include an implementation plan where applicable. And you need to, this needs to be approximately two to 50 to 300 words and things like, you know, you'd have to look at um, the different academics here as well, um, which let me just have a look. Uh, learning outcome five things like you know Kolb and Bloom's taxonomy yeah. so you'd have to just you know identify what that they mean and and things like that but it's it's quite um it's quite an interesting area to look at in regards to that uh you'd have to look at uh, the development of McKinsey and Bloom's taxonomy which we looked at 
And then we've got um, learning outcome six, which was the final learning outcome. And this was on uh, being able to reflect on your own academic progress. And here you had to look at um, identifying um, uh, the, uh, here we looked at um, reflecting on your own academic progress. So here you look at Kolb's uh, framework, which is the next slide. What have you learned? What are the areas of improvement? Don't forget to get feedback from your supervisor. And then here, this was Kolb's learning cycle. So we reflected a little bit on that, on self-reflection, on concrete experience, reflective observation and abstract conceptualization. We looked at active uh, experimentation and we looked at the different learning styles in regards to each one of Kolb's cycle and what is the importance of each one. Uh, we went through that in detail. So we looked at things like, you know, assimilating, converging, diverging. We looked at accommodating. So each one, how it fits into your learning style. We also looked at um, developing an action plan. Why do you think action plans are so important? So you know, like, um, what you want to do and where you want to get to. Yeah. So do you think personally an action plan is like a do to do list? Yeah. So yeah. So. Yeah. Sort of. Yeah. Uh, it's different from a standard to do list because it includes things like resources uh, and your ach uh, achievement, what you uh, intend to achieve. But it is literally a, a checklist of all your tax tasks, all your resources. And, you know, it's literally, uh, for me, I think it is a to-do list, but it's an extensive to-do list. Yeah. Uh, and we looked at the purpose of an action plan, why it's so important. And then, then we looked at the review of the PDP form on learning outcome one. Uh, why there's an importance to have a PDP form, personal development. Um, why do you think PDP is important? So you can see what your personal target yeah. is, what you've achieved and how you've yeah. progressed. Do you think that's important? Yeah, because um, you can use it for your future as well, for future yeah. It doesn't necessarily mean you've got to use it now or, yeah. you know, um, it could be used as, you know, your short term or long term targets. Yeah. You know, so you might have personal development targets might be things like, you know, you want to achieve uh, an MA in, you know, uh, intellectual property or something like that. I teach law. So for me, I think, you know, going down that route, um, it may be that I might want to do a master's or a PhD in, uh, you know, um, an area of law, human rights. So that could be my long term target. A short term target is that I could research around it. Yeah. Um, then how will I achieve it, the targets? So what activities I need to undertake the, um, this to achieve your objectives and what support do I need? And I think it's really, really important you set your targets and you, you um, how you will achieve them because it gives you a little bit of a leeway to say, you know, what progress have I made so far? What activities do I intend to undertake to achieve my objectives? Yeah. If, you know, because sometimes is it quite easy to achieve your objectives or sometimes you it's can get quite, sometimes you know, it can obstacles be in the way? Yeah. Sorry, what's that? Um, sometimes it can be hard. <laughs> yeah, it is very hard sometimes where obstacles are put in the way um, and, and it's it's a struggle for you to achieve your objectives. So you can identify that in your PDP. You know, yeah. you can look at taking different avenues and things, but it does identify the fact that, you know, um, you, you need to be able to achieve uh, your objectives and what support you need, okay? Um, and whether it's a short-term or long-term uh, target. The date of the review is important, any sort of progress made towards the target, any sort of further action required, and the actual date of achieving the target. So would could it be um, the actual date for achieving the target? Could it be the date that you've set in your head or it could change. Um, I think you should have a, like a target in your head. Yeah. yeah. But do you think sometimes things become... Yeah. Um, yeah. If there's something, something um, that gets in the way, then you can just like extend the target a little yeah. bit. Yeah. 
It does. It does uh, play a big part in it. OK, yeah. so I've given you an overview of um, learning outcome one, two, three, four, five and six. You can get all the resources on Moodle yes. for your extra learning and also your additional uh, resources in regards to any sort of um, any sort of books or anything that you want to read will be on Moodle for you. OK. Um, and I'm just going to go to the assignment. Can you see this? It says assignment and research skills. Yep. OK, so this is the assignment and research skills that you need to do in regards to the assignment for academic and research skills. Uh, so the assignment presentation, so the document structure and formatting, it is good practice to put the unit number and the name on. Start with a bit of an introduction to the unit. So a module could be 30 to 50 words introduction. Write out the learning outcome if you are mentioning it, otherwise it's not required. Font size needs to be 12 and line spacing. 1.5 page number to be inserted. Table of contents to be drawn and conclusion 20 to 30 words and reference and bibliography. Why do you think we need a structure when we're putting together an assignment? Why do you think there's a need for it? So it's easier to mark as well? Um... Yeah. 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 It's easier to map, but it's okay, easier for the reader to be yeah. able to understand what learning outcome you're referring to or what page something's on. So yeah. it's really yeah. important you have a structure in place. Use tips. So read the tasks carefully, focus on details, command verbs broadly, just as guidance I suggest for action. Command verbs, you can cover the tasks by writing them. So explain define, describe, 70 to 100 words, assess, examine, clarify, analyze, 100 to 125 words, compare, contrast, critically evaluate, 150 to 200 words, and then we use a Harvard system of referencing. And it needs to be referencing, needs to be the Harvard system. For example, author and the date style. For example, Slack, Johnston, Brandon Jones, 2011. And that would be in the text. In yeah. the reference towards the end, you would it would come up as shown, um, which would be everything. Okay, words limit recommended four thousand five hundred to five thousand five hundred words. Assessment theory application SWOT analysis SMART objectives skill audit and PDP example activities. So assessment on this um, assignment brief involves all tasks will require you to complete word templates. Task one to Task four, complete these templates using provided. And then task three is a mini research report to 250 to 300 words, which is the five broad chapters which we identified earlier on. So introduction, literature review, research, methodology, findings and conclusion. So the scenario, I think it's the same one I've got. Expect, yeah. So the scenario here is an important as aspect of success in your study is your own personal development and in particular the development of academic and learning skills you need to know what you are good at your areas for development and you need to use this information to set targets for your first personal development do you think we all do that or do you think we just let it go uh sometimes let it go <laughs> yeah but it's important don't you think it's very very important to do that yeah because then people, you know, especially people like managers and things, they will just put it, brush it aside. Yeah. If you don't set yourself targets and have a personal development plan in place, uh, then you must ensure you are always working towards them. This is an ongoing process and have developed skills in review and action plan that can be applied in any future learning, career or for more general personal development. You will be able to complete the assignment as you work through the course. You may wish to use a personal development plan, which is a PDP, at the end of assignment for tasks one and four. You may also wish to refer to the ATHE Learner Handbook, where there's a template for you to assess your skills and there's no also further uh, useful information. Just going to go on to the tasks now. So let's just, I just, I just want to have a look at it. Right. <clears throat> so uh, that that was just the assignment uh, brief. So you, I think you've got access to that as well, haven't you? Uh, um, it's on Moodle. The assignment brief. Yeah. 
So task one, you'll get access to all this that you could use on Moodle as well, okay? So okay. task one, it covers learning outcome one, AC one, 1.1, 1 .1, 1.2 and 1M1. Throughout this course, you are encouraged to reflect on your learning. Set your own targets and monitor your progress towards these. To start this ongoing process, you need to assess your own strengths and weaknesses. Now think about your academic skills, research, note-taking, summarising, paraphrasing. Your academic English language skills as well is really important here. Write up your assessment in a note form. Using this information, set targets for self-improvement. These could include short-term targets for completion during this course, as well as long-term targets. So once you've drafted your target checks, check them, make sure that they are smart targets. So make sure they are specific, measurable, achievable, realistic, and time. You remember we had a look at the smart objective? Yeah. Make sure they are that. This is important as you need to monitor your, prog monitor your progress against these targets in task five. So conduct a SWOT analysis, refer to your template, 1.1 on Moodle. Strengths, so, so, so these are some strengths um, that it's an example for you. So it kind of helps you. Yeah. Strength is you respect individuality. You're independent in decision-making. You're an organized person. So your organizational skills, your Microsoft Office skills, note-taking skills, you use the Cornell methods of note-taking, shorthand and you're good at harvard referencing there's some of the weaknesses and areas that you can improve because some people don't like the word weaknesses so areas that you can improve on um academic writing skills information seeking skills communication skills at beginning level because you know you could have anything in there then you've got 1.2 which is the uh, smart targets so you refer to the template on Moodle, which will help you. So this is really, really, uh, it's really easy for you to kind of identify. So if you want to, um, so this person in this example wanted to understand and develop Harvard referencing skills, which is a good thing to have as an objective. So there, the specific bit on that is um, from the SMART objective template is that I want to be able to do Harvard referencing while writing my assignment. So what, that's the specific bit. The measurable bit is the Harvard referencing um, from two types. So direct quotes, in-text referencing and paraphrasing. The achievable goal is whether it is achievable. Um, so here it was achievable undertake some activities to learn and develop Harvard referencing. So watch videos, read a presentation and use the referencing tools that help you. The realistic bit of it, are there su sufficient resources? There are sufficient resources. You've got the referencing generator sites and practice the use of author on your assignments. The time bound, three to four weeks in term of time frame. So it's quite a nice objective um, that someone has used as an example which will help you um, so you could have different objectives for the extension activities to gain a merit you must develop a plan which shows how you achieve your targets so just going back to this assignment here can you see that task one yeah so it says throughout the course you're encouraged to what we've just start so think about your personal skills your academic skills your note to write up an assessment note so that's what you need to do for your first task for the extension, and this will be um, learning outcome AC, AC 1.1 and 1.2. I'm just going to switch from both so we have a better idea, even though some of it is just the same, okay? Yeah. So the, the extension activities um, to gain a merit, uh, is, is do you tend to do the extension activities? Yeah, I, I'm trying. <laughs> yeah. Good, good. It, it does help you, you know, to improve your grades and things. Yeah. Then personal development plan. Refer to the template on Moodle. Uh, what a personal development plan is, and it enables individuals to take charge of their own learning. Learning becomes a proactive as well as reactive process design and prioritised to support immediate development needs as well as longer term ambitions. So, you know, it's there to enable you to identify your key areas of learning and development.
I'm not going to go through that. This is just some guidance notes for you to identify, okay? Task two, which is the note taking. So this is learning outcome AC 3.1 and 3.2. Note taking is a key skill for any study. You will need it for a course of learning for many aspects of your work in life. You need to demonstrate that you have mastered, mastered this skill by showing that you can note take uh, sorry, no key points from information heard and from reading materials, as well as the skills of paraphrasing and summarizing. Look through some of the notes uh, from your learning today and provide examples of where you have uh, noted key points of information from a variety of sources using active listening skills, that you've noted key points of information from a variety of sources using reading strategies. So things like scanning, skimming, what we went through earlier on, and then paraphrasing and summarized information. So this is um, task um, two, and you need to refer to the template on Moodle and uh, complete that. So noted, um, this is uh, the task two, which is an example for you in regards to um, an, uh, a style of graphs. Um, let's go to the task two as well. So again, this, like I said, it, it covers um, learning outcome three, AC 3.1 and 3.2. Task three, carry out an academic research project. AC 2.1, AC 2.2 and 4.1 and 4.2 and 5.1. As part of your course, you need to research information using both primary and secondary methods and then write up or present your findings. For example, in your assignment, um, this is a health and social care setting, you need to research the structure of the sector and current legislation. Using this example or other examples of academic research you have carried out, write up what you, you did to complete your academic research. Make sure you have a research plan, an outline of the process used uh, for carrying out your research from different sources of primary and secondary information, the first draft of your research work, a list of all the sources you have used, so make sure you use the appropriate referencing techniques, your final draft produced to a professional standard, and these are the ones you would be referring to in, uh, in task three. Refer to the template on Moodle, this will cover task three and its extension activities. So you can see the research pr proposal form there. Have you decided or have you thought of any research proposals? Um, I haven't. You haven't, no. I mean, the one that was the good example was COVID and the effect on businesses, which could be a really nice one to do. Um, research proposal here, so you'd have your name, your title topic, what is your role in your organization and your proposed topic of research, aims and objectives, and why you intend to the purpose of the research. So you need to do this and send it to your supervisor. The extension activities in regards to task three is that it's 2D1, 5M1, and 5D1. To gain a merit grade, you must also include the feedback from your tutor on your draft work. Include evidence that you have improved your work, as a result of the feedback on your first draft, you need to present your academic work orally to a professional standard. And to gain a distinction, you must also discuss the content of your work at your oral presentation. And you must review your research and provide an analysis showing how you have adhered to good practice in your primary and secondary research. You know, you know the oral presentation, yeah. what does that mean? like? You'd have to do that in front of another tutor. Okay. So you'd have to produce PowerPoint slides and things like that. Okay. And that would let me go back to here, task three. And that would be covering um, AC 2.1, AC 2.2, 4.1, 4.2, and 5.1. Okay. Okay. Then we'd go on to task four, which is learning outcome six, which is AC 6.1 and 6.2. So how are you doing? It's time to reflect on your progress. Ideally, you will do this at intervals throughout your course and at the end. Think about the targets you set in task one for yourself, your academic skills, research, note-taking, summarizing, paraphrasing, your academic English skills, 
you should write up your findings on your personal development plan. Develop your action plan and make notes for any further actions required for improvement. Progress and further action required. This is when you need to look at this. This is on Moodle. My personal development targets, short term and long term. How will I achieve these targets? Um, and what do I need to do to achieve these targets? And what objectives I need to meet? The date of the review, progress made towards targets and the further action required, the actual date, which we looked at earlier. Assignment submission. So the, um, which I'll go back to in a bit. Let me just have a look at task four. So it just identified the same as I've just said, a personal development plan um, and develop your action plans. Now to gain a, a merit in this, you must work with a colleague, discuss your progress, you have both made and provide feedback to your colleague, including the need to set future targets and record your discussions in a written format or oral format. And this will be learning outcome AC 6.1 and 6.2. I'll go through this with you in a little while. So the assignment submission is, uh, you need to refer to your eBooks and journals on Moodle for this unit. You need to have an assignment submission is after two weeks of completion of the units and its delivery. If using slides, then the referencing will be as below. So Pearson centered approach, learning outcome one, presentation 2002, and then learning outcome two, 2002, okay? Bibliography, so person centered approach, learning outcome two, slide number two to 10. Submission of the assignment to be done on litc at ukvarsity.co.uk um, and uh, http ukvarsity.co.uk assignment submission and declaration of originality and to be submitted two weeks after. So that day is not in place. Okay, that day is the wrong Would day. it be the end of this month? Yeah. I th yeah, it would be the end of the month, but if you needed ed any extra time, you'd have to discuss that with uh, Victor or Raman okay. um, and discuss that with them. Um, I just want to go back to this assignment. So things like, you know, learning outcome one, and these are for assessors, you know, that the learner must provide a detailed plan to how they intend to target things. Um, and also, you know, your issue in regards to your learning outcome one, let me have a look in regards to that. Your, ref, your PDP plan and action plan, these are all a Moodle for you to look at. So, you know, these are examples that you can work from, you know, to help you come up with something that will help you develop and, you know, um, identify any sort of personal development plans that you need to put in place. So these are things that you need to put in place. Um, there is, I'm sure, let me just have a look one minute. Sure, I've got research plan. I find this assignment brief. Hmm. So on the assignment brief, uh, just one minute. Uh, so the assignment brief at the end of it. So at the end, end of the assignment brief, they've got a personal development plan there. And also at the top of it, it tells you how to a sample personal development plan, you know, looking at identifying key areas and things like that in regards to completing your PDP. So this actually identifies some skills for you to look at. They are on Moodle, and I do know there are some sample research proposals on Moodle that you can look at. And they will identify uh, some issues in regards to what you could look at in regards to sample um, uh, research proposals. So I've got one here which um, looks at a research proposal and it looked at a study of the impact of dig digital technologies of takeaway food on customer satisfaction. And it looked at the Just Eat, you know, the study of Just Eat in the UK. Yeah. 
um, and he looked at an introduction firstly, an aim, objectives, literature review, um, the methodology, um, the uh, data collection resources for research, um, and also uh, the references. Then there was another proposal, which was uh, a study of effectiveness of digital technologies in taxi sharing. So the study of Uber taxis, and yeah. they looked at the aims and objectives of that. I'm just trying to find the sample ones. If if I haven't got them, uh, they will be on Moodle for you to have a look at. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to have a look at the sample research ones. They always, which the really good thing is, they always have um, uh, examples for you that you could use. Oh, no, this is just the template, which I'm going to show you in regards to. Can you see this template? E this would be the template that you would have to use. And this is on Moodle. So it would identify what you want to do, um, what your topic is. And this is on health and social care. But, you know, identify things that you want to look at, your aims, your objectives, and identify things like, you know, uh, what you intend to do and the purpose of uh, your research as well. Um, the key, what are the specific focus of this research, um, and also look at the uh, key points of interest, the broader significance of this uh, uh, interest, and also outline what point you, your project will be able to establish, literature review, research methodology, um, and it looks at the sources of information. So what journal articles, anything that you've used to help you come up with, you know, um, identifying certain issues. Also, um, any sort of newspaper articles or websites that you've used. And then ethical considerations. This is on Moodle for you to have a look at in regards to, you know, what you intend to do. So it identifies your literature review and identifies what you intend to do and what you intend to have in this research. Um, And this is another one which is quite interesting, actually. Can you see this SWOT analysis? Um, I can't. I can't see that. Can you not see it? I, I've got it on my paper. Oh, OK. The SWOT analysis is open. It looks at the internal um, origins and the ethical external origin attributes of the environment attributes of the organization and it gives you examples of the SWOT analysis your strengths your weaknesses your opportunities and your threats and it's quite an interesting diagram that identifies you know some examples for you as well because you could you know strength might be that you're hard working and committed and one of the examples of your weaknesses could be it could be that you're uh, your lack of funding, you know, capital. It doesn't have to refer to you as an individual. It could be the organisation. Yeah. So these a lot, a lot of these research skills and a lot of these um, additional information and the smart objectives and things like that, they're all on Moodle for you to have a look at. Yeah. Okay. Uh, So this, these will be able to identify um, what you need to do in your assignment, okay? So, you know, have you got any questions around the assignment area? Um, no, I, I should be, all right. If Are I you have... sure? Yeah. If you've got any questions, you could contact me or you could email me. Make sure you stick to the guidance that we've gone through the assignment yeah. uh, discussion in regards to, you know, how to structure it and things. Um, and your referencing is really important in regards to, you know, using the Harvard system of referencing. Yeah. And the word limits and also, you know, what the uh, be careful you don't move away from what the question is asking you. Yeah. And, you know, uh, the good thing is that you have templates on Moodle that could support uh, yeah. support each task and it will answer your task for you. 
yeah. just refer to you know the um the different types of you know the ones on uh let me just go back to it sorry i'm just going to go back to that and it was things like you know on your uh the learning outcomes on learning outcome two uh which we looked at uh, things like you know your research stuff and everything and then you've got learning outcome three which we looked at which will be part of one of your tasks which we we looked at you know uh the different types of uh, ways to read you know skimming scanning intensive reading and you've been asked that in one of this stuff and also one of the tasks is on note taking yeah. so you could refer to this as well so make sure you know where it says that you should um answer the question around learning outcome one uh 1.1 1 .1, 1 1.2 that you refer to that and you take, you know, your notes, your slides, which are, again, available on Moodle for you and your templates are on Moodle for you to use. Um, if you're struggling to get any sort of templates or anything like that, please contact Victor or anything um, and they will get you access to all the resources if you're struggling. But if you can get the templates, the templates are on there, uh, things like your SMART objectives template. Yeah. Um, and you and the PDP and the SWOT analysis, which is quite an interesting area, and it'll give you a little bit of idea of how you would, um, sub, you know, identify your strengths, weaknesses, and your opportunities. And sometimes, you know, your personal development plan will link in with your SWOT analysis. Yeah. So you know, make sure if you struggle or if you've got go on to Moodle and get all your resources from Moodle. Okay. Okay, have you got any questions before we finish off? Um, no, that's that's all. Are you sure? Yeah. Thank you for today's session, uh, Jasmine, and good luck with everything. Thank you. Take care. Thank you, and take care. Okay, bye. Bye.